I am so glad you're here because today we're going to be talking about part two of alpha carbon chemistry. In the last video, we looked at enols and enolates, so if you missed it, go check it out. In today's video, we'll be exploring clays and condensations, alkylation at the alpha position, and conjugate additions, which are also known as Michael additions. These topics are essential for understanding reactivity and organic synthesis, and stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. First, let's talk about clays and condensations. This reaction is a key method for forming new carbon-carbon bonds between esters and ketones, or two different esters, and it leads to the formation of what are known as beta esters or beta ketones. The first step in a clays and condensation is deprotonation of an alpha carbon hydrogen from a strong base like sodium ethoxide, and in doing so, this is going to generate what we know as the enolate intermediate, where we have formed a alkene at this position, and now the oxygen bears a negative charge. From here, these pi electrons can come down and kick off these pi bonds to attack an electrophilic carbon. For example, if another one of these molecules was present in the system, we know that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic, so this nucleophile will come and attack at this position, allowing us to form an intermediate, where now we have formed our brand new carbon-carbon bond, so we have our ketone, our ester, which was reformed, and our brand new carbon-carbon bond is at this position, which has attacked the carbonyl carbon, generating a negatively charged oxygen species, and remaining with the, re the rest of the ester, which was attacked. From here, these pi electrons can come down, and we have a good leaving group in this alkoxide species, which allows us to generate the new intermediate, which is a beta ketone, and remember that the alkoxide is still present in our solution, so this is separate. So the alkoxide has now been formed, and we are left with alpha carbons, which can subsequently be deprotonated by that alkoxide species, allowing us to generate an intermediate, which is an enolate. So from here, we would be left with our ester, and now we have our enolate species on this side. And then from here, we can undergo a tautomerization where we can reform our enol or potentially our beta ketone. And the way that this is achieved is that the second step in all of these clays and condensations is going to be an acidic workup, which will allow us to protonate this species in order to form either our beta ketone or our enol. Importantly, we can do what are called cross clays and condensations using two different esters to form a brand new species which contains two different chains on each side. So this is a cross aldol because the esters are different. Importantly, this reaction would occur just fine because notice that this benzyl ester doesn't contain an alpha hydrogen. However, we do need to be concerned with what is called the coupling or the condensation of a homoclasin, meaning that if this ester species, which contains an alpha hydrogen, is deprotonated, it could cross-link with itself to make an undesired product, which would be the homocoupling at this position in order to make this product. Now importantly for chemists, we are often seeking reactions that produce only one type of product. This is in order to limit the type of purification that's involved in the workup steps, but also because we may be just be desiring making this product. Now importantly, the type of base that we choose will allow us to do what is a crossed coupling in the event that we have two ester species which have an alpha carbon which could react with itself. And in the previous video, we learned about the base, which is most often used, and that's lithium diisopropyl amide. And recall that that is a negatively charged nucleophilic species where nitrogen has two diisopropyl groups and the counter ion is lithium. So lithium diisopropyl amide is that strong base that can allow us to overcome this homocoupling step. And the way that we would do this is just by doing a multi-step reaction. So for example, if we have an ester that we wanted to couple with a different ester, and not itself, we could use LDA to selectively deprotonate this position. And remember, LDA does not allow for a subsequent reaction to occur with an enolate species. So once we generate that enolate, it is stuck in this position and will not do a coupling where the pi electrons would come down and the alkene would attack another ester. Because LDA is such a strong base, it keeps the reaction at this position. And importantly, from here, it's not until we add another ester species where a reaction would occur. So in our second step, we would introduce a second 
ester. So for example, if we chose to use this ester, which contains a longer carbon chain, now this reaction would occur where the pi electrons would come down, the alkene would attack that carbonyl species, and we could get that crossed Claisen condensation that we're looking for. Using the formation of enols and enolates, we can also alkylate the alpha positions of ketones, for example. So remember that at the alpha carbon position, we can deprotonate to make our enolate species by using a strong base like lithium diisopropyl amide, or LDA. From here, we generate the intermediate species of our enolate, which can then attack by bringing down those pi electrons from this alkene position to something like an alkyl halide. So at an alkyl halide, we could do a nucleophilic substitution if we had a good leaving group as the halide, and we could generate this product by alkylating at that alpha position. Important side reactions to consider are the fact that we still have alpha hydrogens present in this compound, which can undergo further alkylations if the strong base base is still present. Now importantly, we need to consider the fact that there are two different alpha carbon hydrogens which can be deprotonated. If on the first one we deprotonate this alpha carbon, we would generate an enolate species which contains a more substituted alkene. Notice that it's more substituted because we have that R group at this position. But instead, we could deprotonate this alpha carbon to make a different enolate species where we have the less substituted enolate species that's formed. And remember, both of these are enolates. Now from here, if both of these underwent a subsequent alkylation, this one would attack an Rx here at this position, making a product where we're placing the R group on the opposite side. So now we would be left with this product, and this enolate species would attack Rx to generate the di-substituted or di-alkylated compound where both of the R groups end up on the same carbon. Now importantly, the more substituted enolate is going to be a more stable species. So we would call that the thermodynamic product or the thermodynamic enolate. However, because it's more substituted, there is some steric hindrance there. So the alpha hydrogen at this position would react faster. So for that reason, we call this one the kinetic enolate. So one is faster, but one is more stable. Now the way that we would selectively choose which one to form is actually depending on which base we're using. So sodium hydride is another base that can be used instead of LDA, which is a very strong nucleophilic base. And if we wanted to form the kinetic product, the base we would choose would be LDA. And if we wanted to form the thermodynamic product, the base that we would choose would be sodium hydride. And this is a way that we can reach into our synthetic tool bag and pull pull out the right tools that we want to make the right products that we're seeking. Now let's move on to talking about conjugate additions, which are also known as Michael additions. Recall from the previous video, an aldol condensation allows us to make an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So alpha-beta indicates the location of the alkene in an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. What you should be able to discern about these type of compounds is that there are multiple nucleophilic and electrophilic positions. For example, we know that the oxygen being more electronegative is going to be a partially negative charge, whereas the carbonyl compound is going to be partially positive. That's going to make the alpha position partially negative, and the beta position is also going to be partially positive. That gives us two different sites which are relatively electrophilic. So when we do addition reactions, these those additions can occur at either of those positions. Those addition reactions are either called 1-2 addition or 1-4 addition, depending on which carbon is the one where our nucleophile is attacking. Therefore, it's useful to assign numbers to determine what type of addition is occurring. And if we start at the more electronegative atom being oxygen, that would be position 1, the carbonyl carbon would be position 2, this carbon would be position 3, and this carbon would be position 4. Therefore, a 1-2 addition is going to place a hydrogen here, and the nucleophile will attack at the carbonyl carbon. This is called a 1-2 Michael addition. It leaves the alkene intact and produces a brand new quaternary carbon, which could potentially be a stereocenter. Instead, if the nucleophile attacks at this electrophilic carbon position, then we call this a 1-4 addition, because remember the hydrogen is going to the oxygen, which is the one position, and the second number indicates where the nucleophile is going. So at the four position, we would be creating a brand new enol, 
where the alkene has shifted here. And notice that this occurs because once this nucleophile attacks, what happens to these pi electrons is they are moved to this position to form our enol, where the nucleophile is now at the four position. So we call this one four, because one is the oxygen position, then two, then three, then four. And we call this one one two addition, because the nucleophile attacks at the two position, where the three and the four are a part of that alkene. Now in order to discern whether or not a Michael addition or a conjugate addition is going to occur, it's important to be able to identify Michael donors and Michael acceptors. A Michael donor is oftentimes going to be a, a type of compound that has a very acidic alpha carbon. So for example, in a diketone species, we can very easily deprotonate the alpha carbon position because it has been made so acidic. Similarly, a diester species will also allow for the deprotonation of that alpha carbon species allowing us to generate a very strong Michael donor. And we call it the donor because that is the nucleophile in our Michael addition reaction. Here are a few more different examples of great Michael donors. So previously we talked about those Gilman reagents, but we, anytime we have an alpha carbon adjacent to a very electron withdrawing group, that allows for an alpha carbon deprotonation where we can form a brand new species which can act as a nucleophile. Now Michael acceptors are gonna be those alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compounds like we've seen previously. And these can be aldehydes or potentially even ketones. So if we have an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, remember we have those two different positions which can act as electrophiles, which make them great Michael acceptors. And again, similarly, this can be through several different positions. So for example, if we had NO2 here, this is a good Michael acceptor. And even something like a nitrile can act as a good Michael acceptor, as long as it contains this alpha, beta, unsaturated component. Now that we've reviewed clays and condensations, alkylation of the alpha position, and Michael additions, let's try some practice problems to gauge your understanding. Pause the video, try these problems independently, then resume the video to check my answers. Generally, organic chemists like to do reactions where only one major product is being formed. This clays and condensation contains two different sets of alpha carbon hydrogens, which could be deprotonated by a base like sodium methoxide. So one of the cross products would for sure be this product which we're trying to make. However, what that means is that you get a variety and a mixture of products that are being formed. So for example, a homocoupling could occur between this reagent, a homocoupling could occur between this reagent. On the screen, here are all the different products that could be formed via this cross clays and condensation. One way to make our desired product in a cross clays and condensation is to consider the conditions in the order of operations when performing this reaction. So for example, if we use a very strong base like lithium diisopropyl amide, we can prevent the enolate species from reacting by stopping it at the enolate species. So this species is not going to react with itself in the presence of LDA. And then at this point, we can add our second reactant, which is going to allow us to do that cross coupling that we wanted. So notice that this is an ethyl species and we don't want it to react with the methyl species. So in order to do that, we use that LDA and this will allow us to create that product that we're looking for, which is our diketo ester, where we are left with the ethyl on the side of our ketone. One way that chemists form cyclic products is to perform Michael additions on compounds that contain both Michael donors and Michael acceptors. Notice that at this position between these two carbonyl compounds, we have a very acidic alpha carbon hydrogen which can be deprotonated by the methoxide group, allowing us to create that Michael donor. So in that case, we would form what is effectively a carbanion and we still have a position where we have a Michael acceptor over here with this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So at this point, now what we have effectively generated again is gonna be that carbanion where we can use it as a Michael donor where it will do a 1,4 addition at this carbon species, which is very electrophilic. And notice that this is 1,4 because position one is here two is here, three is here, and this is the fourth carbon. So we would call this a 1,4 Michael addition. And when this carbanion attacks at that position, it moves the pi electrons here, 
moving the pi electrons in the carbonyl compound up. Now let's count our carbons to make sure that we're making the right cyclic compound. So if this is carbon one, then we also have carbon two here, carbon three here, carbon four here, carbon five here, and carbon six here. That means that once we adjoin all of these, we end up with a six membered ring. And that six membered ring is the product that we're trying to make but we will go back and check to make sure that we're making our right product. So the ester goes here, and our other ester should be coming off of this side where we end up with the COOME. So now I can check to make sure that we've ended up with the right species. So remember, this alpha carbon between these two carbonyl species should be this position. So the new bond that we formed is this position here. So if this was carbon one, then carbon two should be this one, which contains one, two carbons away from our ester. So that is satisfied. Position three is here. Position four is here. Position five is here. And then position six is at that carbonyl position. And that's a way that you can check when making these cyclic pr products, making sure that you end up with the right number of carbons. When considering whether or not Michael additions occur at the 1, 2 position or the 1, 4 position, it's important to evaluate your Michael acceptor. Notice here we have an organocuprate compound and here we have a Grignard reagent. Now these two compounds, while they're both organometallic reagents, are not the exact same. Importantly, this compound is more nucleophilic at the carbon position due to the ionic nature of a Grignard reagent, which is formed via the electronegativity differences between a carbon atom and a magnesium atom. This is going to form a relatively ionic compound. However, copper has a much more similar electronegativity to carbon, therefore this is going to be less nucleophilic at carbon. Therefore, we would say that this one is a softer nucleophile, and this one is a harder nucleophile. Therefore, we would expect that harder nucleophiles would attack the carbonyl carbon, and we would expect that softer nucleophiles would attack at the alkene carbon. This means that depending on which organometallic reagent we're using, we make different products. So for example, we end up retaining the position of the alkene when using a Grignard reagent, making a new quaternary carbon, and instead, when we use the organocuprate reagent, and since we're attacking this carbon, we end up with a completely different product. Therefore, it is important to understand what is happening and whether or not you're doing a 1,4 Michael addition, like with the organocuprate, or a 1,2 Michael addition, like when using a Grignard reagent. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions related to this topic or anything else related to chemistry. I'll see you in the next video.